Well, let's return to our top story on that blast near the pyramids in Egypt. Timothy Caldas, who is a non-resident fellow at the Tahrir Institute for Middle East Policy, joins us now on the phone from Cairo. Tim, do we have any idea who could be potentially behind this? Uh, it's still too early to know. Um, the last time we had a attack on a tourist bus um, that had been uh, leaving the pyramids in December, no one ended up claiming responsibility. And to this day, there's a debate about who might have been involved um, because the type of explosive used was something you might see from Hazm, but at the same time, they generally don't have a history of targeting uh, civilians. They focus mostly on the security forces. So the target seemed out of out of uh, line with their normal uh, focus. Tim, there were tourists who appeared to be the target here. Is that a, a seeming yeah. change of tactic? Well, it depends on who was engaged in it, right? So if it was if it was ISIS, then no, they've targeted tourists in the past. The most uh, notorious attack of theirs uh, on tourists was the metro jet bombing, in which they downed a, a Russian civilian passenger aircraft. Um, and killing everyone on board. Uh, so if, if it is ISIS, uh, which is very likely, then, um, then this, would, this would be uh, consistent with their past. However, if it's a different group, then yes, then that would mean that people are changing tactics and expanding their targets. Tim, what kind of a response are we likely to see from Egyptian security forces here? Well, historically, uh, these sorts of attacks have been followed by announcements of uh, raids on different militant group uh, outposts, um, and reporting has called into question uh, the accuracy of the government's claims with respect to those raids and whether or not they're actually capturing uh, and killing terrorists, or if uh, if there's um, if there's some doubt to be cast on uh, <clears throat> on those uh, on those claims on the part of the government in an effort basically to convince the public that they have uh, that they have the situation under control. Um, but that's usually what we see. Uh, there will definitely be an announcement of an investigation and, um, and uh, an intensified uh, crackdown of some sort. Tim, we've seen raids conducted in the Sinai region on armed groups there very recently. Could this be potential retaliation for those deaths and those arrests? Possibly. However, what we've had happening for the last several years is a, is a pretty constant um, back and forth where there are attacks being conducted and, and counterterrorism raids being conducted. Um, so it's hard to know to what extent you have what it, what's sparking what at this point. Uh, it's, it's been um, a kind of an ongoing fight between different militant groups and the security forces for quite some time. Uh, so it may not be the case that this is a response to any specific attack, but the more general uh, fight that's been going on between those groups. Tim, can you give us a little bit of background as to the various different armed groups who could potentially be responsible? There are various different groups who are operating in and around, um, well, in and around Egypt and have targeted different groups before. Yeah, um, I would say that the, the most likely culprit, again, just because of the target, would be, would be ISIS. They have the one, they're the ones with the history of targeting civilians. Um, not only tourists, but also religious minorities such as Christians um, and people that they see as collaborators with the government uh, in Sinai and elsewhere. So in all likelihood, it would be them. Uh, we're still, of course, going to wait to see if they claim responsibility. No past attacks of, of theirs have come without a claim of responsibility. Like Everyone is pretty certain that they were responsible for the uh, Rauda attack on the, on the mosque in Sinai that killed over 300 people. However, they never claim responsibility, and there's a sense that maybe there's a disagreement internally over whether or not everyone agreed that, that was the right move. Um, as I mentioned before, Hazm is, in a, is another militant group that uh, has been mostly focusing its energy on targeting security apparatus. It uses IEDs um, in its attacks and, um, and uh, has, has also operated within Cairo quite a bit uh, and Giza, greater, so greater Cairo. This would also have been in Giza. Um, and so they have a history of operations in this area. However, generally speaking, we don't see them focusing on civilian targets, neither foreign nor domestic. And Tim, this took place near the pyramids in Giza. That's a very high-profile target. Does this suggest a very bold attack or, or a particular level of sophistication, given the type of target that they've chosen? 
I think we have to learn more about the attack before we can ex assess the uh, sophistication of it. However, it's certainly uh, of concern to the government given their efforts to uh, revamp uh, its image as a secure place to visit and uh, to encourage more tourism to Egypt. Uh, and as I mentioned, there was another attack on a tourist bus leaving the pyramid six months ago uh, in December. And so the, the fact that, this, that uh, tourists coming in out of this area have been targeted twice is going to give a lot of people pause about the safety of visiting the most popular site in the country um, and the thing that basically draws most tourists to Egypt, which is its pyramids. Um, so it's definitely of concern to the country. It's definitely of concern uh, about the ability of the security operators to secure an area that really is of the top priority for the government um, in its efforts to, uh, to comfort uh, foreign visitors. Timothy Caldas, a non-resident fellow at the Turia Institute for Middle East Policy, speaking to us there on the phone from Cairo in the wake of that seeming attack in Giza. Thank you for being with us, Tim.